Freelancer mode released last year and has easily been one of the most addicting gameplay loops for a stealth game that I've played in a while. Essentially, you are given a random target on one of Hitman's many maps, and you have total freedom on how you want to complete that mission. Now that I have 100 hours in Freelancer mode, I thought it would spice up the gameplay a little bit more if I tried my hand at some challenge runs. I never attempted a challenge run in Hitman before, but I do have some experience with it, like my Deus Ex permadeath run that I did years ago. You know, I'm actually excited to try Hitman Run because of the amount of ways you can complete a mission. So in this video, we're going to find out if you can complete a freelancer campaign using only a sword. The rules are simple. Targets must be killed using only the sword. Freelancer tools are allowed, as are the freelancer boxes on the map. I can poison and knock out targets, but the kill has to be by the sword. So let's jump right in to attempt number one. I grab my weapon of choice and pick a syndicate leader. I've played so much freelancer mode, and there are certain maps I like to avoid, but we'll see which ones a little bit later. I restart my campaign for this challenge, so I lose all of my freelancer tools. So the first thing I'll be doing is running to the supplier and buying whatever tools he has at the time. Yes. Not everything's going to be useful, but if you buy out the supplier, they'll have different items in the next mission. However, I'm mainly looking for the lockpick, a keycard scrambler, or a crowbar. I also allow the use of the freelancer boxes later in the run, but only the tools that don't outright kill the targets. My first attempt at this challenge was pretty uneventful. I made it all the way to the first syndicate leader and then failed because I was responding to a text message. <sighs> pretty embarrassing way to lose a run, but we're still shaking off the rust. I haven't played Hitman in over six months, so I'm still figuring out where to go and how to traverse the maps. I should also probably put my phone on silent. My second run goes a bit smoother. I clear out the Maldives and the Hokkaido without too much hassle and make it to the first syndicate Excellent leader. Work, 47. You've spread fear within the syndicate. Welcome to New York. Good work, 47. We finally tracked down the syndicate leader's whereabouts. We head to New York, bonk some guards, and finally kill the first syndicate leader, taking the secure money truck as our extraction. Well done, 47. This will make anyone think twice before turning to a life of crime. Well, After finally Mumbai. making progress, we get to one of my favorite maps, Mumbai. However, the game decides to glitch out and one of my targets falls to the floor. I'm not sure why the devs didn't put a kill box if an NPC falls to the world, so I can still complete the mission. After not knowing what to do with myself, I headed for the next target and then my game crashed. This might be a blessing in disguise though, no pun intended, because I loaded my game back up and to my surprise I was able to replay the mission. The karma god really threw me a bone here. After I loaded back in, I beelined it to the target and made sure to take him out quickly. The last target was inside the crow's hideout, but it was no trouble at all. A little bit of patience and planting a gun in the patrol's path gave me just enough time to take out the last target. With Mumbai complete, we move on to a map that I hardly played, if at all, Ambrose Island. Welcome to Ambrose Island. I get lost a lot and check my map constantly, but I eventually complete the mission without too many hiccups. Next is probably my least favorite map in Freelancer mode because of this spawn right here, Colorado. I tried to set up a guard to take its disguise, but got instantly spotted and gunned down like a dog. I hate Colorado for this exact spawn. The terrain can be super annoying, and I can't tell you how many times I got stuck trying to knock out a guard. Also, what kind of spawn is this? You're stuck in no man's land with guards everywhere. I would have preferred the water tower spawn, but it is what it is. It's a skill issue, and I need to get good, as they say. It's safe to say I'm still a bit rusty at Hitman, so I take a break for the day and hopefully come back stronger tomorrow. Attempt number three starts with me waking up in a medical bed, reminding me of my past failures. We pick our next target, but I quickly realize we're headed to an alerted territory. I never explain the other territories, but in short, there are more enforcers to look out for and during showdowns, there are more assassins and lookouts. Lookouts will alert the suspects of anything from a body being found to an alarm being set off. Assassins on the other hand will kill you in one shot if you engage them in combat. Safe to say, the alerted territories can get extra spicy. What makes it even more difficult are the disguises. Normally bodyguard disguises are pretty good and only enforcers are suspicious of you, but on alerted territories, civilian disguises are the way to go. Suspects won't become enforcers, and I believe the only people you have to worry about are the lookouts. With that explanation out of the way, in the background I've been tailing a couple of suspects and find myself a disguise that lets me hover around the areas where the suspects mingle. Before I make my move, I make sure to check a freelancer box and the supplier. 
I decided to rebuy the katana and stash it near the exit. I'll be sure to grab it on the way out. I finally narrowed down my target and found a way to take them out. There's a side room where I can isolate him with a well-tossed distraction, and with my katana in hand, finally complete the showdown. Excellent work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. Anyone An alerted showdown too. I can't tell you how relieved that was once I finally completed this mission. In the very next mission, however, I get humbled very quickly. We have Bangkok, which is one of my favorite maps in the game, but it can be pretty rough in freelancer mode depending on where the targets are. This time around, we have an alerted Bangkok and all of my targets are in the worst spots. All in public areas with a ton of people around, including guards, in line of sight of them. I quickly grab a disguise and tail the targets for a bit until I realize that this mission might actually be impossible. Two of my targets are next to each other, but in the open, and setting off a distraction wouldn't be enough. I would usually use a bomb in this situation, but we don't have that luxury here. My other target likes to walk through the hotel, but it's also in a public area with tons of people watching. The only idea I had at the time was to wait for all three targets to get close, take them out quickly with the katana, and then book it for the extracts. That obviously doesn't work out too well, and we get sent back home with a run lost. I should also mention that you lose half your merchants and all your freelancer tools. If you fail a run in an alerted territory, your run is also over. Another attempt down the drain. I knew it was going to be tough, but I didn't expect the target location RNG to make it impossible. How unfortunate. It rather appears that you ran out of luck. Back to the drawing board, 47. Attempt number three starts off like any other run. Pick a syndicate leader, gear up, and throw goats on the criminals. Boom Bai is once again in the rotation, and this time with two targets. I sink into the crow's hideout and take out the first target. I make sure to grab his disguise and make my way to the second target. We crawl through some sewers and sink into the queen's stronghold. I kind of had a tough time getting the right enemies to move here, so I'd said screw it and kill the target and his buddy in line of sight of another guard. I was able to sneak away and get ready for mission number two. Oh, and before I left, I made sure to blow open the safe for some extra mercers. I know it seems like I'm skipping a lot of details here, but the first two syndicate leaders are usually pretty simple, even though I've been messing up pretty badly. I also want to get you guys caught up to the farthest point we made it to so far. Making it to the third syndicate leader would be a new record while attempting this challenge. We get the priest again in Sapienza, so it's easy enough to take him out in the security room. My last target is all the way across the map in the rundown ruins. Luckily for me, we take out the target and find an exit nearby. The first leader for attempt number three is residing in Whittleton Creek. One of my favorite maps in Hitman, to be honest. We infiltrate a barbecue and quickly identify the leader. Whittleton Creek is so good because of how many options you have to maneuver around the map. I park myself inside a shed and wait for my targets. I had a hard time finding an opening, so I went for a ballsy katana throw and booked it for the exit. I tried to time it so his body would fly into the bushes, effectively hiding it in one go, but the gardener saw what happened. Either way, I had to make sure to be extra careful extracting because I didn't have a way to hide my katana. The second set of missions starts off on the Isle of Segail. Not really my favorite map, but a map I do know well enough. The katana kind of limits my options here because if I have it equipped, it shows up on 47's back, making me more suspicious unless I have a guard disguise. Either way, I clean up some guards and steal their disguises. One target is under the huge pyrotechnic stage, so a small distraction is all I need to take them out. The last target took a bit of a setup, but two guard eliminations later and we have our kill. The second mission takes place in New York, and only one target this time. I buy out the supplier and make my way to the IT room. Turning off the vault security lures in the guard, which allows me to grab his disguise and make my way to the vault security room. I didn't know at the time, but I found my target inside the vault security room. I distract him with my briefcase, grab the truck key, dodge some cameras, and make my escape. A pretty quick mission, and dare I say, am I starting to finally get the hang of Freelancer again? The last mission before the leader takes place in Sapienza. I thought I was screwed again because of where my target was positioned, but after what felt like 10 minutes, my target finally moves, and I use the isolated stairwell to distract and take her out. Finally, we're up to the second syndicate leader again. We're headed to Dubai this time, and we have to eliminate the investor. I tried my best here to do Silent Assassin suit only, but that was out of the cards once I needed access to the VIP areas. Oh, and I also kind of went on a tiny little murder spree trying to turn off the cameras, so no Silent Assassin for us. 
I kind of thought my runner was in jeopardy here because I thought for sure a suspect would get spooked and make a run for it. I made my escape and finally crossed off all the suspects except for one. I tried to take out a lookout and again got spotted hiding a body. This time I was actually spotted by one of the suspects. I still don't know how I didn't fail the run here considering I knocked out everyone and they would just wake up to become a witness. But either way, I beelined it to the prime suspect and made sure to stay in close proximity in case she got tipped off. This is where I kind of decided that the freelancer tools are fair game because this kill would have been pretty difficult. I take a waitress's disguise and poison the target's drink. After I tail them to the bathroom, it's pretty much lights out. I still got the kill with the katana, so I see the challenge still being valid. So from here on out, I'll be allowing the use of freelancer tools because the actual kill still has to be done with the sword. We make it yet again to the third syndicate leader. I like to get the alerted territories out of the way first, so we're headed to Mendoza. A map I know quite well. My usual strat here is to take out the guard in the bathroom and steal his disguise and key card. This also gives us access to the security room where we can take out the cameras. I later found out that my target is in the wine room, but the setup takes a bit and things get a bit dicey. I try to use the briefcase here to lure him into a better spot, but I get spotted dumping his body and end up having well to go done. kill Bill on the rest of the workers. I know it's not aesthetically pretty, but it is going to be a queen of destruction. On my way to the last target, I get spotted trespassing and have to take out a couple of guards. One guy gets woken up with nothing but his boxers and a gun. You know, this is true dedication in the line of duty. He really thought he could take down 47 after he just slaughtered all the security guards. After we massacre half the guards, I finally make my way to the target. Probably the easiest part of the mission. I almost make another crucial mistake here by taking down a guard in front of a patrol, but luckily for me, they don't spot the body. Mendoza alerted is complete and we move on to Dartmoor. You know, I actually like Dartmoor, but I hate when I get to spawn above Alexa Carlisle's office. I have no choice here but to wait for the guards to turn their backs so I can escape Enforcer Hell. I stalk my first target and commit some butler on butler violence. I am very very sneaky sir. You know sometimes they really do be your own co-workers. I try to take out the security cameras but once again get spotted. We make ourselves scarce but not before switching back to the butler disguise. My guard disguise gets compromised but the butler disguise is better for an alerted territory. My last target is patrolling the garden so with a bit of patience I lure him into the bushes and shank his ass. The next well, mission takes place Isle yet again on the Isle of Segal, and this time we got a really good spawn. We get essentially a free disguise and one of the best disguises on the map. I had a proceeds mission to blow up a safe here, so I plant a remote semtex for later. I would have loved to come back and collect the mercers, but this place is pretty out of the way. My first target is a guard in the crypts, so a pretty easy kill. I open the secret passage and make my way to the final target. A simple distraction and mission is complete. You know, pretty easy for an Isle of Segale mission. So we kind of have a decision here between Sapienza and China, but I opt to go for Sapienza. If you didn't know, the final mission is where the showdown takes place, so you can kind of plan ahead. I picked China here because it's a bit easier to navigate during showdowns. I get a close spawn to the church, so I take out the cameras and notice that my first target is once again in the open. He also doesn't move, so I have my work cut out for me. I ignore him for now and make my way to blow up the safe for my prestige mission. I set up the charge and forget one crucial mistake. I'll go ahead and pause the video so you can spot it for yourself. I left to pick up some distraction tools and when I run past the safe, I blow myself up. Remember kids, be sure to read the label on your Semtex explosives before placing them down. Otherwise, you might blow your ass up. I can only imagine Diana getting the call that 47 blew his ass up three minutes into the mission. Idiot! It could be a blessing in disguise though, because I have no idea how I would have taken out the target on the pier. I continue to make this challenge harder for myself, because failing the last mission makes a showdown with the leader and alerted territory. 
We have no choice but to head to China and take out the adjuster. I want to say that China is one of my better maps since I played it so much for the story missions and in Freelancer, but alerted territories definitely make this a lot harder. I at least remember the passcodes for the doors, so we have access to a ton of areas. I like to tackle the apartment building first with the lab, because going in and out of the underground lab is kind of a hassle. I steal a researcher's disguise and start crossing suspects off the list. Seems like my target is going to be in the underground lab after all. There's an access ladder that we can unlock to get to the underground lab quickly though. The facility requires you to have a security dongle to hack open doors, so I grab a disguise and make my way to the security room. I've yet to turn off the cameras, but on the way there, I find the prime suspect. So I take out the cameras, clear the room of guards, and set up my kill. I use a gun trick here to lure the guard away and take out the leader. What idiot would drop this? Excellent work, 47. The leader has been eliminated. You know, a pretty clean mission compared to the last one. Security protocol overruled. We finally make it to the last syndicate leader. Can I get a round of applause for getting this far? Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Boo! Oh. You stink! Our oh. first mission takes place in China, and once again, it's alerted. I tackled China first here since we just finished it and it's fresh in my memory. My first target is on a rooftop practicing his dance moves. There's no wonder this guy's on the hit list. I mean, look at those moves. Hi, I'm Renata Bliss, and I'm your freestyle dance teacher. Hitman's gonna hitman as I get spotted through the floor. What even is this game sometimes, I swear. I decide to get a little cheeky here and loot the safe, but I'm forced to hide inside a box. I'm not sure how I got spotted, but it is what it is. On to the next one. I make sure to give them satisfactory service, but they complain, so I have to shank a bitch. Man, the tipping culture in China is kind of brutal. The next target takes me a while to figure out, but I lure him out to the balcony and take him down. I played this map more than a dozen times, but I never knew what the drones did. Apparently they act like moving cameras, and with no way to take them out, I'll have to get creative. I needed a disguise, so I created a body pile with some guards. Hand up. Let's go. Uh, holy crap. You have to love the AI sometimes. So I get rid of his buddy and stab the final target. The drones spot me, but I'm long gone before anyone notices. A spicy mission, but we pull through. Sapienza is our next mission, and it's alerted as well. We get the Ruin spawn, which by now I figured isn't too bad. This mission in particular took me quite a while because of my last targets, but I'll explain when we get there. My first target is in the wine cellar, so we test his throat goat status, and it comes back negative. Plus, who the hell pisses in the corner of their workplace like some wild animal? He deserved it, to be honest. My last two targets are in the underground lab, and these two took me an hour and a half. Alerted Sapienza has so many enforcers in the underground lab, it's kind of ridiculous. In any other playthrough, I might have just chucked a bomb or headshot a target from a distance, but Sword only made me have to play patiently and plan my takedowns. One target was inside the security office with some guards and some scientists, constantly moving in and out of the area. I carefully took down the guards and shut off the cameras. I waited for the target to be alone to finally get the kill. I wanted to poison his drink, but I only had lethal poison at the time, so that was a no-go. I'm not lying when I said this mission took me more than an hour and a half. I surveyed the area to try and get this last target alone, but they were standing in the open with dozens of guards waiting to blast my ass if I could even sneeze in her direction. I ran around the map for a bit looking for an emetic poison grenade, but all I found was a banana. After getting my daily intake of potassium, I headed back to the underground lab to the Visa plan. I used my trusty banana to take out a few guards and planned my kill. This is where I learned about a mechanic that suddenly happened and I completely forgot about. Sometimes you have to be near a target to get them to trigger their dialogue. Once they're done having a chat, they go about their business. I totally forgot that this was a thing, but this still didn't make my mission any easier. I still have to take her down in a heavily guarded area without getting my ass blasted back to the loading screen. We're in an alerted territory, so dying here would mean the end of the run. After testing some distractions, I finally got her to move to a secluded area and took her down. We escape on the seaplane and finally head back to the hideout. Woo! One of the longest and most stressful missions I ever played. However, we're not done yet. We go from one alerted territory to the next. Next up is Marrakesh. 
This map is actually one of my favorite maps in the game, but we get a pretty difficult spawn. We're deep in enemy territory and they all have assault rifles. Safe to say, one f*** up and we're getting sent back home in a body bag. Luckily for us, one of the targets is in the same area. So I grab a guard's disguise and plan my next move. I figured out that the target is isolated in a room, so if I can clear out the area of guards, I'll have an uncontested kill. We clear out two rooms full of guards and wait for our target. I planted my briefcase on top of a bin so I can keep him in place. Unfortunately for me, the katana kill was loud enough for the guards to hear in the next room, so I loot and scoop before I'm spotted. My next target is the guy who works in the rug store. A pretty easy kill since he likes to go into his shop alone. I'm not really sure I've seen you before. The final target is hanging out at the hookah bar. We have yet another target in the open with guards around, making a katana kill super hard to go unnoticed. I didn't have a medic poison at the time, so my job just got a lot harder. I even ran around the map for a bit, looking for poison, but I couldn't find any, not even inside any of the freelancer boxes. So without any other choice, I prayed for the best and pulled out the katana. I yeeted the katana at his head and hoped he didn't get a repeat of Bangkok. I fled from the crime scene as fast as I could and ran to the exit before the guards were on me. After completing two back-to-back, -to -back, tough alerted missions, I decided to take a break for the day and tackle the final three missions tomorrow. With three missions left, I pick Haven Island, my prestige objective, and my tools of choice. Haven Island is actually one of the easier maps for me. A lot of places to hide and sneak into restricted areas. My first target is taking a stroll on the beach, so I decide to leave them for later in case things go south. The next target is posted up in the jet ski garage. I tail them for a bit and decide to go for a cheeky kill. It works out and we hide his body in the tall grass. I was next to the security office, so I decide to take a little bit of a detour to turn off the cameras. My next target is in and out of the bathroom a lot, so it's only a matter of time until we take them out. I couldn't decide what to do for the last target because he likes to walk around in the open area with tons of people watching. I decide to take a risk here and use some coconuts as a distraction. And with that, we take out the third target and hide the body at the same time. Syndicate member eliminated. Well done, 47. My last target is actually the whistleblower in the main story mission. I knock out the guard and narrowly hide his body in the closet. We perform our final throw goat test and head for the exit. Mendoza is our next destination. You already know the drill, bathroom guard, disguise, and cameras. First target gets thrown into the water after I knock out his buddy. Luckily he didn't shoot and alert everyone else. The second target is in the wine cellar where Yates holds his meetings. We knock out a couple of guards and the second target is down. The third target is a little tricky because she's in a pretty open area. The only chance I have at taking her out is when she takes a smoke break in the little roundabout area. I use my briefcase as a distraction and go for a kill. I don't want to take the chance here and hide in the body in case someone spots me, so we make our way to the extraction. My final target is a gardener in the graveyard. I think I was having a little bit too much fun here because I decided to use a banana to knock her out. Well done, 47. The banana was the real MVP in this mission. And now we move on to the final Syndicate Leader. With the final mission in place, I gear up and get ready for what might be the final mission for this run. We have come such a long way. We had some embarrassing fails, and even a glitch ruined one of my many attempts. But it all comes down to this. I decided to save Santa Fortuna for last because it's the map I was most confident in. The only sketchy part of the map is the underground drug lab. I cross off the first suspect on my list. We're actually looking for someone with gray hair, a necklace, earrings, and glasses. They are also a sweet tooth and a bookworm who likes to attend secret meetings. If you haven't noticed, the showdowns increase the number of suspects the farther in the run you are. We have 9 suspects to profile, so we have a ton of tailing to do in high traffic areas. Early on, I find a suspect meeting the description, but I can't kill her just yet without 100% proof. Also, this guy in particular for no reason. I tail some more suspects in the construction yard and slowly but surely cross off more people off the list. It's starting to look like my first prime suspect might be the one who we're looking for. I take the secret tunnel into the underground drug lab. This place is kind of sketchy since we don't have a disguise, and a suspect could wander down this hallway as we're clearing it out. I find a security room, so I take out the guard to make my life a little bit easier. I cross two more suspects off the list who are delivering packages. Finally, we cross the last suspect off the list because of his red hair. We tail our prime suspect into a secluded area and take them out. Good job, 47. 
you eliminated the leader. We extract using the chopper and prove that it is possible to complete a freelancer campaign using swords only. Ooh, what a doozy. This was my first challenge run for Hitman recorded for YouTube and it was pretty damn fun. It took three days of failures and glitches to get to this point, but we finally did it. Impressive. I have another run planned for the future, but if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up so I know all the hard work was well worth it. If you have any suggestions for future runs, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.